Let's time travel on a journey through the hidden Islamic events that continue to shape our world today. In this special episode, we're diving into the roots of the first Zionist approaches to Palestine and Palestinians being the key holders of Christianity's holiest site, unveiling the incredible story of Sultan Abdul Hamid II and Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi, the most remarkable rulers. Their unwavering commitment to protecting Palestine from the Zionist and Crusaders movement has left an unforgettable mark on the ongoing conflicts in the region. So let's take a leap back in time and explore this captivating tale. Sultan Abdul Hamid II, a name that resonates with greatness. Many regard him as the most outstanding Ottoman Sultan after Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. He ascended to power during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, a time marked by challenges and complexities, but also by profound faith and unwavering commitment to his people. The year was 1879 when Sultan Abdul Hamid II took on leadership at the same time as the birth of Zionism. At the time, the Ottoman Empire had control over more than 30 different countries, which included the holy lands of Mecca, Medina, and Palestine. Here's where things get crazy. The intriguing part of our story begins with the emergence of the Zionist movement, led by Theodore Herzl in 1896. Herzl's vision was to create a homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine. What happens next has went down in history. In 1901, Herzl's messenger approached Sultan Abdul Hamid with an offer for the land of Palestine that would echo through history. The Sultan's response will shock you. While I am alive, I would rather push a sword into my body than see the land of Palestine cut and given away from the Islamic Caliphate. Which led to Herzl himself making a personal visit to the Sultan with a very large financial figure as an incentive to buy Palestine. You won't believe the amounts involved keep watching to find out the staggering figure. Sultan Abdul Hamid replies with, Even if you paid me the weight of the earth in gold, I would never agree. I have no enemies other than the enemies of Islam and the Muslims. The amount offered to sway the Sultan's decision is jaw-dropping. Herzl presented a figure that would leave anyone astonished. $25 million, which in today's currency, would equate to approximately $2.2 billion. But Sultan Abdul Hamid remained firm on his decision, declaring, I will not sell a single inch of the country because it is not mine. It belongs to all the Muslims. They paid for this empire with their blood, and we will redeem it with our blood. Let the Jews keep their millions. If the empire is partitioned, they can get Palestine for free, but that will happen over our dead bodies. Herzl realizing that Sultan Abdul Hamid stood as an immovable obstacle to their plans, Herzl turned to some powerful allies. He allied himself with the Freemasons and European leaders, all with the aim of removing the Sultan from power. In 1909, a significant turning point arrived when Sultan Abdul Hamid II was overthrown by the Young Turk movement, marking the end of his remarkable 33-year rule. This pivotal moment presented a new era for the region, but the story doesn't end there. As we transverse through Sultan Abdul Hamid II's incredible life and legacy, we unearth a story that continues to speak to us today. His steadfast determination to protect Palestine serves as an enduring reminder of its vital role in the ongoing conflict, where justice and the rights of the Palestinian people remain central themes. Imagine a story that takes us back in time, where faith, history, and tradition come together in an incredible way. Our journey begins in the heart of Palestine, where a Muslim family holds the keys to the most important place to Christians known as the Holy Church of the Sepulchre. Why is this place so important to Christians? This site dates back to a long time ago, to where people believe Jesus Christ was crucified and buried, a belief deeply led by Christians. Whereas the Quran disagrees and states that Jesus Christ was neither killed or crucified, and that it was made to appear to people as if he was crucified. This church built in the first century was shared by several ancient Christian sects, such as Roman Catholics, Coptics, Armenian Apostolics, Greeks, Ethiopians, and Syrian Orthodox. They obviously didn't get along, and for 700 years since the church was built, they different sects often clashed violently over who should have control over the church. Could you imagine how this fight could have caused problems? It was very difficult for the different Christian sects to settle this matter, so who could have come along to stop this 700-year feud? 
In the year 1187, a Muslim leader by the name of Sultan Salahaddin Ayyubi, the Kurdish warrior who rose to become the Sultan of Syria and Egypt, he fought tirelessly to liberate Jerusalem from the Crusaders. His legacy isn't just in his military achievements, but his ability to unite people from different backgrounds. After he seized control over Jerusalem from the Crusaders in the 12th century, he noticed this feud amongst the Christians and took this issue upon himself to solve. How he solves this issue will shock you. He takes the keys of the church off the Christians and gives it to the neutral party to control, the Nusayba family who were the oldest Muslim family in Jerusalem. But how would this be fair? See, the Muslims had no interest in the church, and Sultan Salahaddin deemed them to be fair in managing the different Christian sects. Was this really effective? What happens next will surprise you. Fast forward 800 years, the same Muslim family today are the key keepers and have kept the peace amongst the Christians by opening and closing the doors of worship for each sex designated prayer time every single day for almost a thousand years now. This story isn't just about keys and doors. It goes to show that a Muslim's nature is trustworthy and can coexist with the people of other religions. In the Holy Quran, chapter 60, verse 8, Allah the Almighty says, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act fairly. This verse encourages the importance of treating people from different faiths or backgrounds with righteousness and justice as long as they are not actively fighting against you or trying to force you out of your homes. It emphasizes the importance of fairness and kindness in how we interact with others regardless of their religious beliefs. The people of Palestine opened their doors for the Jews and Christians. It's sad to see the injustice and war happening today. Share to show the greatness and strong will of Muslims now and throughout history, thanks to their unwavering faith in Allah, and to show the fair and just side to Muslims the world fails to see. Don't forget to keep the people of Palestine as well as anyone else facing such tragedies and conflicts around the world in your prayers.